Come on. Hey. What about those shells? Which, oh, I'll, um, oh, hold on. I'm live. I'm going live. So you'll have to wait. Hi. I had a discovery, as you could see in my title, that um, my husband seems to have Asperger's or you know what they call now high functioning autism. And it has this knowledge is a game changer because for years I have been so frustrated. He said, what am I doing? And this is him. What am I doing wrong? You know, his intention is always very good, very noble, but man, have I been frustrated and uh, kind of judgmental and painting him into this uh, space where he's stubborn and obstinate and, and um, preachy and all that kind of stuff. And as I'm reading more now, about um, high functioning autism adults and marriages with neurotypical, they call it neurotypical women. I'm reading my story all over the place. Every article I pick up, I'm going, oh my gosh, that's us. The, the sensory issues that my husband displays, um, the, the very logical thinking, literal thinking. For example, this is one of the clues. Um, so my daughter is getting ready to be tested for autism and, and the fellow that's kind of helping us a bit. He, he, when he came to our home, she met him with her eight year old poodle who acts as her therapy dog, her support dog, which is incredible. I would highly recommend that if, if somebody, you know, needs something like that. Oh, this dog is amazing. Anyway, so she meets him at the door and he says, Oh, what a pretty pup. She goes, he's not a pup. She's eight years old. He goes, Oh, well, sometimes we call other dogs pups. It's okay. If they're older, she goes, thinks about it for a while and Oh, okay. But her first go-to is this very literal, very concrete thinking. So the other day, I'm taking care of dishes in the kitchen and on, on the dishwasher, I have a magnet that says clean and dirty. And we flip it over in my mind. Clean means please unload the dishes. Dirty means please load your dishes. So oh, there's a noise. Hold on. There we go. Had to shut the door. Okay. So I'm, my husband comes in and I was saying, man, I'm just so frustrated. The kids are just not loading the dishes. And we got the magnet on there and everything. He goes, you know, that magnet doesn't work for me. Clean, dirty. I'm like, so what? Okay, so it's clean or dirty. But if you put something like load, unload, then I know what to do. I thought, wait, not a pup. There's a dog. Clean, dirty versus load, unload. That just sounds so familiar, this very literal world. Um, the other thing that I've been reading about the autism spectrum is that the, one of the biggest markers is that they just don't read the social social cues. They just right over their head. They're blind to it. They don't, they don't see them. They don't recognize them. And it may be much later after the fact. They go, what? what went wrong? People aren't responding to me the way I thought they would. I put my heart out there. I was talking and sharing from my heart and they're all like, not even looking at me anymore. They're kind of like, you know, turning away or whatever. <clears throat> and I've noticed this in my husband for years. He's very passionate about the topics that he loves. Another typical thing, you know, he deep dives into these very specific topics and then, and then he goes to share it and he gets repetitious with what he's sharing and he doesn't read the language of either the kids are shutting down or people are kind of shutting down and not wanting to listen anymore. I thought, oh man, he's so arrogant. But it wasn't that. He can't read the clues. He was sharing with me. I may cry. He was sharing with me the other day how sometimes he's sharing these things from his heart and he, and he, he thinks people are interested and then it takes him three or four times and, and he realizes, oh, I'm repeating myself. And then he stops and he looks around and people are totally disengaged. And he's like, well, what's wrong? They don't like me personally. So this is quite a, a discovery. So many things in our marriage you saw we separated. 
it was intense. We were fighting. We were fighting. I, I felt like I was constantly doing emotional cleanup of the kids and he was being this hard nose, boom, 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 you know, didn't stand any variation type of a thing with, with what he thought was the correct behavior of my kids, of our kids. And so I was doing lots of emotional cleanup with our children and trying to soothe him and take care of the kids. And I'm getting lost in the process, which is another typical thing that happens when women marry, you know, a neurotypical person will marry somebody with Asperger's or autism. Typically it's women with men. The woman will just kind of feel like she's just disappearing because she's taking care of the mood of the husband so that the kids don't get hurt. And then, you know, playing mom and dad in that, in, in the, in the more emotional side of things, because there's a disconnect over here with him. I hope, I don't know if I'm making sense. I'll make more sense as I go along. Um, as I continue sharing with you, um, what I'm learning, I'll outline more. I just wanted to, to speak to this a little bit. So if this is something that you're dealing with, um, or you might wonder, why are we fighting all the time? I know he's a good heart. He's a good man. I married him for good reasons. He was solid and comfortable and steady. I'll be sharing with you what I learned in a much more organized fashion than I am today. <laughs> so we're not going to divorce. This understanding for both him and for me has just opened up our mind. He's going back through his life going, oh, that's why this didn't work. That's why that didn't work. That's why they reacted this way. That's why they reacted that way. That's why in our marriage, we've struggled in this realm and then that realm. And, and then I'm going back in my mind going, oh, that's why he, that's why he said this. That's why he did that. And it's, and it's just changing the whole paradigm of, of what I thought we were functioning under, but it's something totally different. Um, so we are reading we are finding a counselor that works with marriages like ours so that we can build on his strength and my strength and we can support each other in the way we need to and get our, our emotional needs, our mental needs, get our needs met. And um, his sensory issues and my frustrations and, and address all of those. So I'm going to be pulling in lots of different pieces into this um, this playlist uh, on my channel. And there's other things I'll address um, in other playlists. For example, um, sexual abuse. How about uh, miscarriages and healing from miscarriages? Some pretty tender things. How about safe conversations? I was just trained as a safe conversations facilitator. And, and I'll be doing workshops and training people and families how to have safe conversations in this millennial era that we live in of all the texting, all the technology, safe conversations seems to be a lost art for many people. And, and I've been experiencing this format um, and this, this system of having these kind of conversations and it's a game changer. So I'll be sharing about that. I am stepping back into mentoring. So this is as of July, 2019. So if you watch this much later, I'm probably full blown mentoring again. Um, and so if that is something of interest to you, feel free to contact me, um, go to the website and contact me and uh, kind of that's it. So. Autism spectrum disorder marries neurotypical person. The emotional needs are not met. And this person feels like this one is too crazy, too wild, too unpredictable. And this one feels like life is just going stagnant because this one needs consistency and systems and, and schedules and things like that. Just how to navigate it. It is fascinating. It is fascinating. So one of the books, I'll just comment on this. One of the books that 
is recommended in so many articles that I've read. It's the five love languages. Now, this one is the five love languages of children, because we do have young children. And I quite frankly think it's a really great primer because it's so simple. But um, five love languages in a marriage, ASDNT, that's a neurotypical autism spectrum marriage, can be very helpful because it can be systematic way of getting your love needs met and him getting his love needs met. So if you haven't read it, I suggest you get it and read it. I'll present, I'll, I'll present material on what I'm learning from this as well and how we're, how we're doing, how we're dealing with the impatience of figuring it out and, uh, and things like that. This was probably very random. So those of you who are neurotypical may have gotten it. Those of you who are in the ASD spectrum probably thought this was the worst, worst kind of a, a live stream presentation thing ever because I was really all over the place. So I will definitely try to get more organized and it will be helpful for everybody. Okay, that's it for now. I just had to put it out there and get started on this before I move too further along into this journey, this new discovery. Have an awesome day. Ciao.